the opportunity to engage with this committee. It's a, as you are well aware, a critical time for aviation. There are a number of issues in play, uh, so we welcome this opportunity. Um, we submitted a statement um, a few weeks ago, uh, our introductory statement. I'm assuming you've had a chance to read that and, and uh, was not proposing to uh, read through that verbatim. Uh, we also um, submitted a supplementary statement yesterday, um, and I would like to draw on some of the key points within that. Um, you know, this is a, an evolving situation. Um, issues are changing by the day, uh, by the week. And there have been a number of issues over the um, previous few weeks, um, which are detrimental to aviation uh, and which we would like the opportunity just to discuss here. Uh, I think I'd like to start with Stobart. Um, and uh, since, uh, since the last committee, uh, I believe the demise of Stobart, uh, Stobart Air has come into the public domain. This committee has um, discussed for some time the risks posed to aviation by the ongoing uh, pandemic and the uh, restrictions posed on, on aviation. And if we did need more evidence uh, of those risks materialising, then I think uh, Stobart's demise is exactly that. We were informed uh, just close to midnight on the 11th of June that Stobart would cease trading. Uh, and the Ellingus team worked through the night, through the weekend, to put um, services in place to rebook, uh, refund, and reaccommodate passengers where they could. We have uh, announced that we will be able to sustain, uh, as Aer Lingus, six of those services uh, over the coming months. Uh, our partner airline, City Flyer, uh, BA City Flyer, will be operating some of the others. And we've also indicated that uh, we are willing to step up and operate the uh, Kerry uh, Dublin services uh, subject to an appropriate PSO. Uh, and also the um, looking at options to be able to restore Donegal Dublin services. It was disappointing to us that the um, first change in policy following Stobart's demise was actually an increase in the restrictions posed between UK uh, and Ireland passengers. The very market that Stobart had been uh, serving and, uh, and and where it had it suffered significantly due to the pandemic. I think the next issue I'd like to draw attention to is the um, discrepancy between how the the travel restrictions post the 19th of July uh, take a different approach to the UK and the US uh, than they do to Europe. They are two key markets for aviation. Um, we don't believe that an evidence-based evidence approach would conclude there should be differences in the restrictions between travellers, uh, Ireland, UK, Ireland, USA, uh, and the rest of Europe. And we believe that's a further impediment to aviation uh, getting back on its feet and, uh, and starting to see that recovery that we all need and hope for. Uh, the uh, particular consequences of the restrictions on travellers to the UK uh, and from the UK and to the US and from the US is what I would describe as an anti-family policy. So you can you can travel as a family with vaccinated parents, uh, an Irish family coming back into Ireland from the US or UK, their children would then have to quarantine or self-isolate at home. Um, and any, um, any uh, US or UK families choosing to spend some time in Ireland, uh, they would be able to move around vaccinated in Ireland, but the children would need to, again, isolate. This is um, a situation which dampens any um, enthusiasm for travel. It's another impediment, and it's one which we believe should be revisited. I'd like to next comment uh, briefly on the subject of antigen testing. Uh, we do believe that antigen testing uh, is the appropriate form of testing for pre-departure screening. Uh, that view is shared by uh, other countries uh, in the EU uh, and have adopted that standard. Uh, the Irish policy still insists on PCR testing, which is more expensive, uh, less convenient, and again, uh, another impediment to restoring travel. We, um, the, the final issue I wanted to draw attention to was the provision of data 
that demonstrates to uh, other countries, to passengers looking to come to Ireland, uh, the status of COVID uh, and the attractiveness or otherwise um, to, to travel to Ireland. Over the recent weeks, that data that uh, hasn't been provided to the US authorities or to the EU authorities. And consequently, whereas other countries, uh, France, Italy, Greece, Germany, uh, have been categorized from a US perspective as you can reconsider travel, the absence of that data had Ireland still in the category of do not travel. Uh, as I say, another impediment to um, restarting aviation. Um, it is a situation which we believe has been corrected in the last 24 hours. Um, so I'm hoping that damage uh, ceases, um, but undoubtedly over the past weeks, um, that will have had an impact on propensity uh, to fly to Ireland. So in conclusion, we had, um, we had an optimism uh, when the announcement was made on the 28th of May. Um, and we were pleased to see um, many of the changes that were announced and the opening up of travel on the 19th of July. The cumulative impact of the ongoing uh, restrictions and the issues I've raised does mean that our enthusiasm has been dampened um, and it is looking too little too late to really have a, a significant bounce that will, will get us on the right path to restoring connectivity, um, supporting jobs uh, and connecting Ireland um, in, the, in the near term. So um, I'm looking um, forward to discussing these issues with you, but in particular looking for your support as a committee for addressing many of the issues that we've uh, we've put forward and that we believe uh, are essential to restarting aviation and the healthy aviation industry in Ireland. Thank you.